Hello and welcome to the Play versus Rocket League, the GHSA Championship Finals. I'm the Doxology, alongside me is Caribou, and we've got a matchup for you today. Between the number three Longhorns of Lambert High School, the powerhouse in Georgia, has been here before, and the number 12 Bobcats, the Gilmore High School. And honestly, you look at their records, Caribou, and there's something to be said about the journey to get here in the fact that the Bobcats did take down the number a, a big deal for them to be able to, as a 12 seed, show up in that fashion. Yeah, being able to take down the one seed on top of that, they were able to take down the number five seed in the second round of this tournament. So the Bobcats have certainly made quite the impressive run to get to this point. On the other side, the Longhorns coming in as a three seed, they beat the number two team, but everybody else ranked below them here have certainly earned their position as well. Virtually identical records running through the bracket, 16 and two, 16 and three in favor of the Longhorns by a singular game. So really not a lot different between these two. Both have earned this championship run. Absolutely. And this is a big, big group of teams that have, you know, been in the GHSA. You know, you've got 166 teams that competed throughout this season. And you look at the regular season, the, the matches won for the Longhorns. They had seven and one. And you look at the Bobcats, they were six and two. The only difference was the games dropped. You have a 23 yes. and three for the Longhorns throughout the regular season. And that 19 to 11 losses for the Bobcats just shows you who can get hot in a tournament such as this. And now we're playing in a best of seven final. We're going to find out exactly which team is still hot, ready to go in just a moment with game one around the corner. But Caribou, in a best of seven, we've got, you know, a lot of different things that we can look at. And like you said, both of these teams have earned it. We see, you know, the Longhorns took down the number two seed in the semifinals. The uh, Bobcats took down the number five and the number one seed. So, how are you anticipating you know the battle to be won is it going to be on defense or is it going to be on offense i think we're going to be able to tell the answer to that pretty quickly there in the first game as to what's the difference maker going to be for each of these teams you know what game plan are they going to employ are they going to go for an aggressive offensive attack or are they just going to sit back sit home kind of study their opponent and then go from there and see what happens because there's there are options and we've seen both options be employed in tournament play and then after game one it goes a complete 180 the opposite direction where you have a one to zero final score game one and a six to zero <laughs> score in game two like it, it could go either direction i'm excited to see though who does come out and who does set the pace and who is the team that asserts their dominance to kick this thing off absolutely i mean we have seen the responses and the way that you know just having that extra few games you know in a best of seven series gives you the opportunity to you know make some adjustments and change some things around we've seen that happen in you know tournaments before where players have changed cars uh and and been able to provide a little bit more defensive or more offensive you know front and and so there's a lot of different strategies to go with it but the really exciting thing is that one of these teams is going to be crowned the ghsa champion but the other thing is is they're going to move on to play in the play versus cup in just a few weeks next True. month so here we go game one right around the corner We've got the Bobcats in the orange. You got Finks, Holden, and Just Burrs. The Longhorns in the white. You got N8, BNSN. We're going to call him Nate is what he asked for. And Mandu and Foul for the Longhorns. And now we are already 15 seconds underway and ready to go. And one of the things we're going to have to keep note of in this series as it kicks off as to who is the team that goes on the offensive approach first and foremost? And are they able to control the boost of the other side? That is one of the most important factors of Rocket League is just being able to keep your opponents that much slower to take advantage of on the play. And Foul looking like he's just trying to do some solo play here. Could have had a good chance for a double touch off the wall there. But the Bobcats defense recognizing what Foul was trying to go for and goes up on the wall to catch it. Pinks with a shot on goal for the Bobcats and now going the other way is the Longhorns Nate playing it off the wall but that's met great defense by Holden and you see him just continually center it Mandu tries to get to it but Finks is able to chip it to the outside corner plays it off the wall let's see if Holden can touch it he does and that gets centered up very nicely as Holden with a little touch pass up but Mandu uses all of his boost to get to it now Finks back into the corner on the attack for the Bobcats 340 remaining in game one 
of the GHSA Championship Finals. That's a big demo along the board's midfield. And you see Mandu and Finks going for it. Now Mandu with the tiny bit of boost. Just Burrs can't quite get to it. Holden has to get back along with Finks in the goal. That's centered up. Nate with a shot on goal. Ooh. And Nate drops one in first with 3.23 remaining. And you see just the commit right here. As that goes off the wall. Finks gets bumped by his own teammate. Can't quite get to it. And now the Longhorns with a goal lead. It starts with one and just try to be able to add on to it after that. Start to build up some momentum from your team. I mean, I would imagine the Longhorns already having some momentum on their side, assuming they were watching the broadcast previous where their League of Legends team just won into 2 0. So obviously, esports program over there for the Longhorns, they're doing something right. They have two separate teams in championship matches. Now, just Burrs answers wow. back with a long goal from almost his box just chips it over everybody a good heads up play 305 remaining and we've got a tie game yeah just a little too heavy of a commit there both of the other two offensive players going to each respective corner taking them completely out of the equation nate just going a little bit too far forward but great kickoff <laughs> and rebound <laughs> off God. that this team is a, a team that i'm honestly really excited to watch just based off of the fact that you know with a player like Fowl on their team, who's going to Akron next year, has one of the top Rocket League programs in the nation, is incredibly telling of the talent level of this Longhorns team. So I'm very curious and very excited to be able to watch these three and watch them in tandem working, and also to see how the Bobcats are going to be able to slow a team with the capability like the Longhorns have. How are they going to slow them down? Well, 245 remaining in this game, and it's only a one-goal lead. And you and I both know that one goal is really not that cushion you're looking for in a Rocket League tournament. I mean, even with triple zeros, we've seen a couple goals drop in to tie things yep. up as a good defensive stop by Holden there. Now they're trying to push it around on the attack, but met by Foul, and you just talked about Foul and just how many seasons he's played how well he's played and going to a school like akron gives him just that extra little boost as well of recognizing you know his rocket league talent we're gonna see him again in in you know seasons to come for sure no oh, absolutely gonna be translating from this level to the collegiate level i mean just being able to be on a rocket league team that's as good as akron's who have certainly made a name for themselves as an esports phenom across the collegiate scene. That's definitely going to be seeing foul a few more times in the future. But, I mean, for what the Bobcats have been doing, you know, they got the lone goal off of the long clear. But other than that, they've actually done a pretty good job to stifle this offense of the Longhorns and now actually have been applying pressure really well the last minute or so. Burrs throws it up halfway. 90 seconds remaining in game one. Can Holden get a shot on goal? Ooh. That bounces just wide. Followed up Ooh, by Finks. That was dangerous. Just Burrs. Now Mandu has to play it into the corner. You see Holden come up. That bounces forward. Is Finks able to get to it? Instead, Nate takes a shot down low. Finks bumps his teammate trying to get it. Just Burrs now clears it out. That's tipped up. Just Burrs met again. Holden got that midfield full boost, so he goes directly back and plays that off the wall. With one minute remaining, they're just trying to figure out exactly where they want to go with it and play it very patiently there's no real push no real over commits yet and yeah. this bobcats team number 12 seed but they're looking very poised in this pressure situation right now as they're in a 3v1 and that's just bounced wide by finks great defense by the bobcats yeah and that demo as well just a clutch save right there to be able to keep the numbers even at one-on-one -on -one coming back and then get in front of the ball. That was a very close, very scary situation where the defense gets caught out, but single-handedly thinks able to save that one to prevent it from being a 3-1, but they're still finding themselves at a deficit and the clock's ticking. Foul using the boost to get back. Just Burrs takes it. Last few oh, seconds. The move. Is that going to go in? It does. Just Burrs off the top shelf. You see him just bounce it right past the defender, and that really just right there nate had that if he could have just get, gotten back a little bit more maybe he would have been able to bounce that out but instead it drops in and with six seconds to go we've got a tie game 2-2 two, two. 
Just a simple little chip over the top. Foul ended up missing on the side wall. Can Burst do it again? Oh, imagine if. Imagine, <laughs> imagine. if got it again. And we've got extra Rocket League off the bat in game one. How exciting is that? Certainly one way to start the series, and it's already over. <laughs> Nate just decided that was uh, that was enough. Yeah, we gave him a chance, and uh, about seven seconds is all they needed. Nate had a great goal off a kickoff earlier as well, so being able to quickly set something up for the Longhorns to be able to win that one seven seconds into extra time, but still really reassuring for the Bobcats in the sense that they were at a deficit for most of the game, and just when they needed to, they were able to get the goal scored, tie things up, and go to overtime. Yeah, the Longhorns very, you know, controlling throughout that whole game, but at the same time, credit to the Bobcats for coming in strong, holding that really potent offense to only two goals in regular time. You know, they gave up that final goal, of course, in extra time. That kind of pressures them a little bit going into game two, but at the same time, a really good response by this number 12 seed that you might not exactly think that they're going to play this way. But again, they've been on a hot streak. They took down the five seed. They took down the one seed in the last match that they played in the semifinals. So they're going to continue that pressure up and a good job by them to tie things up with six seconds. It was just a little bit unfortunate as Nate gets that overtime goal right there. You see the replay go with seven seconds into extra time. But a great job overall by both of these teams in game one. And I think we're going to see it just kind of ramp up throughout this series not sure who's gonna take it first um we've seen teams adjust very quickly caribou so i mean i i really am excited about game two i think that's gonna be a little bit more telling yeah and even if the longhorns do end up taking game two and go up on a 2-0 lead in the series we've seen that happen where then the team can bounce back and take the next three games in a row to put them on serious point in the in context of the bobcats so it's not necessarily like even if the bobcats lose another one and go down 2-0 they're out of this equation by any means they certainly are in a great spot to be able to compete with the longhorns even being down a game it was a very close competition in game number one now take some notes off of your opponents figure out what you got to change what you got to do minor tweaks and adjustments and try to take this one to even the series back up absolutely we're already 30 seconds into game two zero zero finks playing it off the wall again the bobcats in the yellow the longhorns in the white each of these teams earned their place here in this ghsa championship Ooh, final awesome. big time save by mandu and then burge just comes through with a big time demo on him and talk about mandu we didn't see him necessarily on the offensive side last game but he had 23 touches in game one and that tells me that he was all over the ball, whether it was on defense or just, you know, giving some great centers and opportunities as foul Ooh. plays that off the wall. And now the Longhorns take a one goal lead with 354 remaining. Yeah, just being able to get there, holding, misreading that one off the wall and just lays it in there for foul. And it's, it's something that's simple just to follow up the initial opportunity, regardless of whether or not there's a defender there. You still got to follow it through. Still got to act like you're going to be there for the rebound. And foul just having the discipline to do so ends up being in perfect position to get a shot on and get the first goal. You see Burris with zero boost. Mandu with zero boost. Picks up that midfield full boost and then immediately uses almost all of it to attack. But instead, that ball goes the opposite way. Now holding that midfield picks up a couple midfield boosts on the pitch. But instead, he gets kind of bounced out. And that's just really good defense by the Longhorns to utilize the, the bumpers, really, to just bounce the car out of the way, not give him a chance to touch the ball. That's a floater. Is it going to be cleared out by foul? Holden comes back to keep it in. Burrs with the shot on goal. That goes wide. Is he going for the double touch? That gets cleared out by foul. Great defense by the Longhorns. 3-11 remaining in this game, too. And again, the Longhorns have a one-game lead on this best-of-seven series, Caribou. So they're playing with a lot of pressure as Ooh. Burrs comes in with three minutes to go to tie things up at one for the Bobcats. Yeah, and that all started. I mean, they had all three players way there, way up in the zone. They didn't have anybody beyond midfield line on their defensive side. Ends up with a full reset. All three players rotate back to go get their boost and then come right back on the attack. Ends up with a good pass play. Burr's in the right position. Able to get the shot on, bouncing past a couple defenders. Good awareness by the Bobcats to recognize when they had to stop and reset and then go back on the offensive. 
2.45 remaining in game two. Tie game. Really great response from both of these teams in game, you know, from game one to game two. We have seen a couple, you know, of those just blowout games where teams have responded and, and come back and just taken those, you know, game two, game three, game four type, you know, just kind of flows of, of the tournament. But this just really feels like both of these teams were warmed up. We were already into the game six feel and now both of them treating each of these games as if it's an elimination game, just putting everything on the field. 2.08 remaining in this game. Oh. We're still tied. Can Mandu get to it? Holden gets back, chips it up off the wall. That's another shot, but oh, just Burz. Burz with a big time save. Burz playing it off the wall. And again, you see Holden come up. That's going to go up to Foul. Foul having to use a lot of boost to get it cleared out. Nate center. with a Good beautiful shot. center, but Holden clears it out. I mean, this is back and forth between these two powerhouses right now. A great setup there from the Longhorns. Just unfortunate the shot goes high because that ball was moving. It was going to be very difficult. And on the counterattack, they had about 30 seconds prior to that. It's very dangerous. Bobcats really didn't have any defense back, but Bird was finally able to come back after the demo to get a clutch save. I mean, both of these teams, like you said, are playing like this is game seven every game is the elimination game and that i think is the best type of way to play act like every game is with everything on the line because you don't ever want to put yourself in a position where you're actually facing that circumstance down 3-0 down 3-2 nate with a really good correction burrs was there to make the stop but gets demoed actively able to clear it out now finks comes in that's right in front of the goal but that's going to get cleared back into the corner you see nate come up he picks up a little bit of boost but not enough to be able to get a shot on goal that's a floater burrs clears it back to the other side we're talking 45 seconds remaining in game two of this ghsa championship final and that was a very close opportunity from finks but he couldn't get enough on it to get a shot down. Now foul going up. He's going for the double touch. Does he get it? That goes wide. Now Mandu with a shot. That stays wide as well. You see Finks and Holden in the goal for the Bobcats. That's going to touch the top. And oh. now it's just a double commit. Mandu played that so incredibly well. And now the Longhorns with a one goal lead. Yeah, just a good pitch and catch right there. But you see on the top side, Finks misses. And then you have... Burrs, it looked like just going to pass over the top and neither one of them in position. Mandu just waits patiently, gets in the air, hovers for a second to get the shot on. And that's probably about going to be very indicative of how this series goes. It's going to be a lone goal, potentially a late goal that it's going to make the difference in virtually all these games. See Nate with another shot the last 10 seconds to tick off. Oh, Holden pass. gets it cleared out. And we saw the Bobcat score with six seconds to go. Can they get a triple zero? As Burrs keeps it alive for a second, but it touches down and the Longhorns are going to take game two. And you think about just how quickly things change. You see six centered balls by foul and the way that he played throughout this whole time. time. And then Mandu with that patience to get that victory goal right at the end there. I mean, that is championship Rocket League right there. We see, look at the replays right here, Caribou. And honestly... Uh, I'm seeing just a battle right now at midfield and then just the control of the boost and how well they're both playing defense. Yeah, this is a really good battle back and forth between these because both these teams are getting good setups, getting good opportunities and finding ways to execute when it comes down to it. There are not many chances that they're having that is a clear open area for a shot on goal, but when they do see them, they're taking them and making the most of it. And, you know, they had a couple of shots that went wide off the framework, couldn't quite get to where they wanted it to be as far as accuracy goes. But this is great Rocket League between two great teams. And like you said at the beginning of this show, sometimes when it comes down to bracket play, a team just knows when to get hot. The Bobcats even finding themselves down 2-0 in the series. They are fighting and going blow for blow here with a three seed that has looked so good from start to finish. Absolutely. And, and and you look at just how many of those goals were, you know, scored in that game that were very, very close. I mean, it wasn't like they were giving up, you know, six, seven goals or anything like that. It was two goals and one was just a quick overcommit with, you know, Mandu in oh. the right place at the right time. You see foul right there dropping one in with six seconds into game three off the wall you see nate just play that so incredibly well finks comes up to challenge can't get up high enough and that's a big goal for them but again it's not as if that these are you know just free goals i mean a lot of these are are hard fought for these opportunities and the longhorns just have the 
you know, the movement and the capability to maximize those opportunities and drop one in. Yeah, and that one is just exactly that. It's the movement and the capability to drop it in. You saw Nate just hop over the top of Holden. There was no chance at all. Holden was trying to go for a bump, trying to disrupt that. Nate ends up playing it off the wall perfectly, where Fowles is there to follow up. And that just shows that the Longhorns have played together and are very good at working together. The comms are on point right now, and you know, they're feeling a little momentum, feeling in the groove here, which is a point that would become mildly concerning for the Bobcats because... But well, now they find themselves down 2-0, both in the series and in this game. We're not even a minute in. Not even a minute in. 4-17 remaining. You see foul with just beautiful movement. I mean, that's just beautiful control at recognizing the defense committing on that first little chip shot and then following it through. So the Longhorns with the two-goal lead. And we talk about how you know well they've played. You're looking at eight seasons all together of the Longhorns team between... All three players, Foul, Mandu, and Nate. I mean, Mandu alone has played four seasons of this play versus Rocket League already. So just the seniority of recognizing what is to be expected in a championship caliber tournament as this. I mean, they, they recognize. And again, the GHSA has 166 teams. That's a big time save, but it doesn't, doesn't get cleared out quick enough. Nobody to help them out. You see Nate just come through and float that one up. Holden tries to touch it. Burrs gets a handle on it, but not enough. You see the English just kind of roll back and foul with another goal. I mean, that's just an impressive, impressive touch shot from foul. 340 remaining, and now it seems like the heavens have opened up and a lot more rain is coming down against the Bobcats. Yeah, and it's one of those games, you know, there's... As you said, game two, three, four, there's always that one bounce back that turns out to be like an outlier of the series. And potentially this scoreline might be that outliers. It's already a 4-0. But that previous goal, Nate just recognizing in the same situation that Mandu does here, Nate and Mandu both on their assist to foul, utilize all of their boost, carrying the ball through the air and recognizing that they are now out of that play are just going to leave that ball. It's like a, a rocket stage separation. They're going to leave it. The ball's going to continue on without them, and they're just going to fall safely back to Earth where SpaceX has a landing pad waiting <laughs> for them. And then from there, foul just takes over. Gets the shot on, still has the boost. This team is just working so well together. They recognize their strengths and weaknesses of each individual play. The Longhorns are looking really good. They are, and one of the things about the Bobcats is that I feel like they're playing a little bit more defensive, almost a little bit more uh, conservative, rather than what we saw in Game 1 and Game 2 was that attack, that uh, you know aggressive kind of nature of their team that they were able to get shots on goal. Their defense you know, got a lot of bumpers on bumpers to make some you know, cleared shots. That's going to bounce off the corner. Nate almost chips that in from the side. Holden finally trying to clear it out. Mandu with a shot on goal. And now Mandu gets in on it. And that's another goal. We're talking five goals with just about halfway through game three. Yeah, all kinds of time left. And it's a good thing for the Longhorns. It's a bad thing for the Bobcats in the sense that I guess it's good and bad both for the Bobcats because there is a lot of time left, but also the point that you find yourself with a five-goal deficit, you don't ever want to have to try to make that up. Mandu, almost another great opportunity to try to sneak that one in inside the upright. But, I mean, the Bobcats have a long ways to go and certainly have something to figure out in this next game as to, you know, what are they going to do on the offensive side to try to slow down this Longhorns offense and how are they going to be able to maneuver around their defense? Because right now this game has been all in control from the Longhorns perspective. And really the Bobcats have not had any chances, haven't had any setups. Every time they try to get a pass, try to get a center, there's always a Longhorns player in the air already waiting to disrupt the attack. Burr is playing it along the side, takes it all the way down the field with honestly just a little bounce. You see him just carrying it. That's beautiful dribbling down, beats the defender. 149 remaining. Honestly, that's exactly what they need to do to kind of just slow them down, give themselves a little bit of momentum, you know, shift, and make more of those type of plays. Because, again, they've played very fundamental defense for the most part. They've had some great opportunities on offense. They just haven't been able to capitalize the way the Longhorns have until this game. This is the game that they really started to feel that pressure of the Longhorns offense. 
Yeah, and this is, all of a sudden says a lot here about you know where the series could go because if Longhorns up end up in a 3-0 position looking for clinching a series in a sweep, then that is significantly more pressure on the Bobcats. And you got to wonder if that's starting to be a cloud moving in that is starting to hover in their minds like, okay, we're down 5-1. We're going to be down 3-0 in the series facing elimination. Like, do they have the mental fortitude to be able to bounce back from that? And the way their offense is playing right now is telling me that – they're all in on the aggressiveness. They don't want to give up. They don't want to even worry about the fact of what the scoreline says. A big time demo again. We're under a minute to go. Longhorns five, Bobcats one. The Bobcats trying to find some form of offense in the offensive zone. Can they keep it in? Mandu can't quite clear it out for the Longhorns. Foul comes up to uh, meet midway. Nate stays back. That chips right over Nate, but instead Mandu is there. Great rotations by the Longhorns as well. They're getting back very, very quickly, and they've got a lot of boost as 30-second marker has gone off. And we're looking at the final few seconds of Game 3, and the Longhorns have just been absolutely dominant throughout this game. Ooh. Another shot almost dropped in. Mandu doesn't have enough boost. Finks has to go up. That's a big-time save. save for the Bobcats and Finks. Great job there, but Nate just kind of controls it. The final few seconds are going to tick off this clock. And we're going to be looking at a 3-0 lead in the seven-game series as Holden just kind of last few seconds recognizes that bounces up. So a 5-2 victory for the Longhorns. I mean, that puts them in a perfect position for going into game four, an elimination game for the Bobcats now. And foul, four goals on that game. And you talk about, you know, somebody who just took it right at them right at the beginning there. Uh, the first minute and a half, I feel like, was just fouls showing off exactly what he could do on offense here. As you look at some of the replays here, Caribou. Yeah, and talking about foul, you know, what's just that finishing touch that they need? It gets the first one single-handedly six seconds in. After that, they have a couple of assists to come through where Nate is able to pitch it off to foul on this play. On the next one, Mandy's the one that pitches it off to foul. You see Nate with zero boost this time. Mandy's going to have zero boost on the next one. It's just a great pitch and catch and a great unit cohesiveness that the Longhorns had in this game to be able in the first minute and a half go up 4-0 put one up that makes it five they give up a couple on the other side it is what it is you get one for the road in the last few seconds but the Longhorns really stepped up in this game their offense really came online and that's a huge boost of confidence for them going to the next game concerning matter of it is that the Bobcats their offense looked better in the last 90 seconds but beyond that it was just a, all complete control and complete dominance from the Longhorn side. Absolutely. In game one, I mean, we saw a 2-2, you know, regular time. And then we went into that extra time and a quick goal scored by the Longhorns to take that as game four is now ready to go. And we're going to drop in here and look at this and see exactly how the Bobcats can respond. But really in game one and game two, we saw an aggression from the Bobcats that really rivaled and showed oh. up as Nate just drops in another kick. one in we're talking four seconds in off the kickoff here look at this bounce off the wall you see a little oh. bit of a touch from the defender foul was there though that was going in regardless because foul was right there as well to put it in if, if it had been blocked uh but that's just the rotation and the movement of this longhorns team i mean they're so good lambert high school they do it on all sides of esports you talked about it before the broadcast before in the League of Legends tournament that they were able to take the 2-0 victory. I mean, that's just an impressive school uh, and an impressive esports program. Yeah, and they just look really good there. They look just as good in this one. And, you know, Nate being able to get the speed flip and the pinch off the kickoff. Burrs just unfortunately gets the nose on it. Thing to note here in this one, we have Sniped Raven that is substituted in for the Bobcats on this side. So wondering if that's going to make a difference. I almost think that going into an elimination game, substitutions are probably not a good idea because all of the cohesion you had built up with the previous three and subbing in a third in a game like this is potentially problematic in the sense that the teamwork might be even less cohesive now than it was going through the first three games. But we'll see how it pans out for him. We will indeed already a minute gone by. It's only a one goal game. And the other aspect of it is, is that, you know, a lot of these teams have played throughout and they've practiced and they're ready to go with each other. So you never know if there was maybe a connection issue or anything like that. And Sniped Raven said, look, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to 
come in. It's my time to shine. I'm going to help the team out. You know, so we don't know exactly, but with three minutes and 30 seconds and it's a one goal game, I'd say a lot of defense and a lot of offense is still on board for this as the Bobcats fight to move this to a game five. They've got, again, it, kind of what we've seen in the first couple of games, you know, outside of game three, which might be an outlier scoreline. The first couple of games was a lot of well-fought midfield battles, you know, good 50s, good aggressiveness on both sides. The Longhorns still rolling off a little bit of momentum from that last game, but the Bobcats certainly are doing better to stop and slow down this Longhorns offense, regardless of how much time is being spent on this side. Dangerous little floater over the top there that could have just snuck in, but otherwise the Bobcats just need to start to put an offensive possession together, and they're already looking so much better now than they did in the last game. Yeah, you see Fowl has been playing back a little bit farther, along with Mandu. Really, the Longhorns have kind of stepped back from their aggressive attack, and they've played almost a more defensive game. Sniper Haven can't quite get to that, but he lets it go to Burrs. And now Holden with the shot, but that's met by the good, good defense of the Longhorns. You see Burrs come up, gets absolutely demolished from Fowl. Mandu plays it, and you see Fowl and Nate go up for it. That's going to be centered up. Can Mandu get a recorrect? He does, but it goes to Holden. Holden clearing it back, takes a shot on goal, but Fowl, again, the rotation back, the, the good defense, as really the Longhorns haven't let up uh, you know, too much to, to give anybody an opportunity to take a free shot on goal. And I think that says something about the Longhorns. They got that one goal lead, and now they feel very comfortable playing a little bit more uh, defensive and less aggressive. Yeah, and they're just able to be able to cover the bases on all aspects of their gameplay, which is a sign of just a really good team, regardless of how they play. You know, they haven't had a lot of chances to be able to try to get a, a cohesive attack from the Bobcats side because of just the way that the Longhorns defense is playing. It, it is just enough where you, you, they don't have to disrupt the passing lanes. They don't have to bump or demo you off. They just have the rotations being able to cover everything. Someone's always on the goal line. Someone's always going back. The Longhorns are just playing really efficient Rocket League, even if they don't have to score a lot. They scored one, and they have the lead, so that's all it takes. We're up to one minute and five seconds oh. remaining oh. as just Burrs now gets a little bit of help from the defense. You see that ball go straight uh. up, and he just back kicks it over to the corner and nate trying to clear it out instead just bops that right back into the goal now we have a tie game and we've seen this before you know late in game one we saw a tie game we saw one one in game two and now with one minute remaining the bobcats are, are really doing a good job of kind of playing to their pace and what they want to do and they're trying to stay alive and push this to a game five yeah, they're doing a really good job to, you know, keep the heat map towards this side of the field and get another one. Raven off of the center, good pass to be able to just sneak it behind. That's a well-aimed shot to give them the lead here off of the mistake from Nate on the first one. And now with a 2-1 lead, 45 seconds, you know, the Longhorns aren't out of it. We've seen them score off of kickoffs already a few times in this series. And 45 seconds, still plenty of time to get something going and expect to see the Longhorns offense really start to kick it up a notch, turn up the aggression once more. And they already did it. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely already Eight did seconds. it. And just a couple of seconds off the board, you see just Nate coming up. That goes a little bit high. Mandu gets the rebound off the wall, drops that in 38 seconds, and it's tied again. But we talk about Sniped Raven dropping that in for the Bobcats, a ninth grader, Holden, a ninth grader. I mean, this is a young team that is playing yep. throughout just Burrs, an 11th grader. You know, a couple seasons under their belt and it's now Foul drops that in for the lead. I mean, Foul has just played so incredibly throughout this whole entire championship series. I really feel like he's played a little bit more defense to try to give his team, you know, just a little bit more help. He's so good on both sides of the ball. And now with 32 seconds, the Bobcats facing elimination and the Longhorns 30 seconds away from being the GHSA champions. And a great comeback in this position to be able to find themselves here to try and finish it here and now. Nate gets another one. The defense is caught out of rotation and really good positioning here. I mean, they had two, three, four shots right there back to back to back and finally get one to go in. Just dead center is the squishy just too little too late. Raven couldn't get out of the net. But, I mean, you talked about the youth of the Bobcats here as a 12 seed. 
expect to see them back again in action. But the Longhorns, just because of the reputation they have as an esports program from that high school, I mean, this is a championship caliber program, and they're showcasing it exactly that. They get a 2-0 series victory in League of Legends. They get a 4-0 series victory in Rocket League. This is an esports team that something in the water is working very well for all parties involved. Absolutely. Man, do with five centered balls there, which, I mean, you saw them get involved in the offense for the Longhorns. And congratulations as the number three seed, the Lambert High School Longhorns are the GHSA champions. You look at some of the replays of just how well they played here. And Caribou, I think you and I both expected this game to go you know, a little bit more because they were so close. But when it came down to it, the Longhorns just finished out their shots. I mean, they finished out the opportunities that they had. And that was the big difference maker. Yeah, it's crazy to think 46 seconds to go. It was two to one. And this final scoreline is a four to two going the other way. So it's a, a crazy turnaround from the Longhorns. And kind of to the point of what you were talking about, like they started playing a little more defensive. They were playing a little more passive, a little reserved through most of that game. And then all of a sudden, when they needed to, you know, they get an accidental own goal from Nate, and they're like, oh, okay, well, I guess we should probably play offense now because we don't want to lose a game. So they just did. And that just shows that they're just a really solid team that they can still keep a game at 1-0 without playing much offense. And then when they find themselves trailing down 2-1, they just flip a switch and like, okay, game time. It's time for business. Well, the Cinderella story of the number 12 seed Bobcats comes to a close as they fall to the number three Lambert High School Longhorns who take the GHSA championship. Congratulations to you. Not only are you a champion here, but now you have the opportunity to move on to play in the Play Versus Cup, which is coming up in just a couple weeks in the month of June. You've got the Play Versus Cup is just so unique and incredible because it is the culmination of that scholastic year of esports excellence. You know, anybody in the 2020 or the 2021 spring or fall semester or the championships in high school or youth championships that took place, they're invited to go head to head and it's going to determine that sole single champion. So you're playing the best of the best of the best in that. And that's going to be a blast, whether it was League of Legends. We saw Lambert yep. already be there and ready to go. Uh, Rocket League, now they've got two teams in it, as well as Fortnite. So it's going to be an absolute blast. And I cannot wait uh, to see exactly how who who's going to finish out. We're not even done with some of the tournaments. So we're <laughs> yeah. still going to see some... Other really good teams qualify for the Play Versus Cup, and it's going to be an absolute blast. Yeah, I'm very excited to see the Champions Club as we get there. But as you mentioned, looking to see the bracket of where we ended up and how we got here, the Longhorns finally make their way in the best of seven. They get their name highlighted in orange as the wearers of the crowns going out of this one. But, I mean, the Cinderella of the Bobcats, you cannot just understate you know, how they ended up getting here you know, beating the one seed and the five seed, you know, taking down a 13 seed, which is basically even with them. They started this whole thing off playing the 21. So even that not the seeded, not much lower than they are. So had a phenomenal run to get to the championship game. Just unfortunate. They met a Longhorn squad that, you know, took a couple of games to really come online. Game three poured it on and then just rode the wave through game four. The Longhorns, obviously a great team, great program. An absolute great team. And, and, Foul was just absolutely probably my favorite player to watch in this tournament. Just seemed like he yeah. had so much control. I think we're going to see him a lot more uh, in the future. And I'm very, very excited for that. You'll also see us a little bit in the future as well as we still have more play versus to go in the future date. So keep an eye on that. But for today, that's going to do it from play versus. I'm the doxology alongside me, Caribou. We're going to sign off and say we'll see you next time.